I thought I'd do a little video showing some of the uh, ancient stone ruins on Jersey Island. Uh, and the first thing I found is that everything is incredibly close together. So this is the first one. It's actually supposed to be the oldest man-made structure in Jersey. It's about 6,500 years old, and it's called the Sargent. It's a burrowed, like a passage tomb. And it's Neolithic, and it took me nine minutes to get from the airport down to here. And I'm just gonna zoom in along the coast. This was occupied by the Nazis in World War II. It's about four kilometers or four miles by six miles wide, I believe. And in that span of space, there were 10,000 Nazis occupying it. So the British really just gave it up. Not that they gave it up, but they just didn't intend to fight for it because there were so many people. And I'll show you the, the passage tomb in a second, but you can take a look and see the uh, incredible defenses that the Germans have set up all around the island. And you can imagine how hard an invasion would have been and how heavy the casualties could have been. So here's the actual ruins of the sergeant. It's a unique mound in that it's the only sort of chambered tomb like this on the island. There used to be, before 1923 when it was excavated, used to be a, uh, be a big mound over it. But if you look around, it has been somewhat kind of uh, reconstructed because they opened it to take a look inside, they got to put the rocks back where they were, so naturally a lot of it has been uh, put back together with cement. But one of the interesting theories about these, because this is all just theories, this was 6,500 years ago, but if you take a look at this, rocks like this would have been placed on the ground. And you can see these at the uh, similar tombs in Scotland, how on certain days the sun will rise up over there and the light will illuminate the tomb. The tomb basically represents, because it was a mound, the womb of the earth. And by climbing over this, by climbing over the rock, you somewhat leave the earth and enter the realm of the ancestors, and the ancestors would have been buried inside. And what is unusual is that this is the only one on the island that actually looks like this. So it speaks something to a culture that vanished. And the construction, again, is similar to, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's a similar one in Ireland. Uh, it's one of the most famous tourist attractions in Ireland. But yeah, and it's got a, a beautiful view down to the beach that I was showing earlier. And uh, I think this view is pretty up here. It reminds me a lot of Cornwall. The lighthouse and all the little houses down there on the rocks. God, it would be beautiful to live here. And just a six minute drive away from the Sargent tomb, we have this, which is another Neolithic site. It's not really known how old it is, but it's very impressive because this is granite. And you gotta imagine as a Neolithic culture that it'd be very difficult to carve granite like this. But after the Ice Age, a lot of the British Isles were covered in these glacial erratics, where the glaciers would kind of erode all the rocks around them and carry these things for miles. Uh, but what's unknown is the exact age, and the reason why this is here on the side of this road is because they expanded the railway in 1850. And in 1850 they discovered this rock with two other boulders beneath it, uh, sort of holding it up. And there's actually a photo over here. And one of the interesting things is that a lot of these are within view of the ocean. And so they found Neolithic axe heads in here. And it translates to uh, the table of the witnesses because back in the day it was uh, kind of customary to sign documents uh, on this table. This is another spot on the southern coast of the island, La Cote de saint Relais, And it's not so much a stone ruin or a dolmen, but if you take a look at the history of this place, there's actually caves inside of those cliffs off to the left where they found Neanderthal uh, evidence in them. They found evidence of early fires. They found evidence of occupation by basically Stone Age people. And what's interesting to think is that in the last ice age, uh, the, the ocean levels were much lower and people were, um, they were, they were really just living in caves. And so places like this, you'd have Neanderthals living because there was a land bridge between France and uh, the UK, what is now the UK. Obviously it wasn't the UK back then, 
but uh, you have evidence of people coming basically from Africa and from Eastern Europe and all over the continent to places like Jersey, which would later morph into these unusual cultures uh, which spread these stone ruins throughout the islands. And the cave, I believe, is actually right over here in these rocks somewhere where they found Neanderthals. This is the Falduit dolmen. And again, my French obviously is bad because I don't speak French, but it's 6,000 years old and it's being kind of damaged by the increased number of visitors that are coming here because it's a popular new tourist site for the island where people, I guess, just come by and have a party. But uh, first recorded on the maps in the 1680s, I believe it was about a 15 to 20 foot tall mound which was excavated three times up until the main excavation by the Jersey Society in 1923. And this society basically removed all the dirt from the top of the mound and did the first actual archaeology of it. Now, when you see these, you can tell that they aren't what they looked like originally. They would set these passageways up, these tombs up, and then build a little, like, pyramid out of dirt on the top of it. So, Again, I'm not going to make any statements on like whether or not it aligns with anything, but the coast is right over here. And you can imagine maybe there was something important on the coast or the sun would come up at a certain time of year and mark it. And here we are again on the north side of the island this time. All the other ones have been to the south and eastern part of the island to <coughs> La Hogue de Jonas, uh, spelled like Jonas. And this is a burrow tomb which is apparently about 6,000 years old uh, and you can already see sadly that it's had to have been kind of updated because they first investigated in the 1920s but uh, quarry workers were the first ones to discover it again most of these uh, have this kind of pattern and they took a lot of the stones for the quarry and a lot of the stones which they took have been replaced with granite stones but really fascinating to see that inside of these you have these unusual formations of rocks which must have had some religious significance but I mean this is 6,000 years ago nobody knows what significance any of this held and it's really interesting to think that there was a religion that united all of the Celtic areas Ireland and Wales and Scotland Cornwall Brittany all the Channel Islands and it's completely lost to us now up there next to that old farmhouse is a dolmen called La Couperon. But if you take a look out here, what's interesting to take a look at is how close France actually is to this island. And if you think back 6,000 years ago, when most of these dolmens were actually constructed, there was a land bridge between the Channel Islands, France, and Britain. And so you have to think that between here and that part of France, if this is only nine miles across and four miles, you know, lengthwise, you have to imagine that there must be hundreds, if not thousands, of ancient settlements and ancient temples buried somewhere underneath the water out here, which is fascinating to think about. All of this connected. And they must have had some fantastic religious center who knows, they may have had a, a sort of pagan mecca somewhere down under there. This is actually a Neolithic gallery grave. And compared to some of the other ones, it's pretty recent. This one's only 5,000 years old. And uh, it may have been the sign set a part of a larger complex. I forget the, the name of the one in France, the famous one. It's always on Ancient Aliens, but it's like Scarabre or something. But I think that's very pretty with the old farmhouse in the back. And then, because they're always very close to water, or on a prominent hill where you can see, I guess, back in the day it would have been, you can see the countryside from it, because all the distance between France and us right now would have been probably low-lying country fields with other pagan sites on it would have been a strategic location for a pagan temple or tomb or whatever these were. And there's some debate whether or not these were 
primarily supposed to be tombs or religious centers where burials were just kind of incidental. And I noticed that all around Jersey, it's basically built of red granite. But if you take a look at this, it's actually built of um, pudding stone, this is called. And being a little different, it makes me wonder what purpose this served. Now I know the Celtic people, at least in East Anglia, there's, you have to go down some real rabbit holes for this conspiracy, right? Because it's very, very specific. But there's this theory that pudding stone was placed from Seahenge, which is off the coast of uh, Norwich, all the way down past the, uh, the main trail, the Pagan Trail, where you see the West Kennet Longborough and and Avebury and Stonehenge, and it was basically a line of uh, stones that would have been used as markers and a long since forgotten pilgrimage trail that led all the way up through uh, Norwich. And Pudding Stone could have held some significance to these ancient people, but again, this is such a long forgotten religion that there's no way of ever telling what the significance of the Pudding Stone would be. It is a little interesting that this is entirely made of pudding stone though. I'm getting my feet very wet for this, but I think I see over here a pagan site, a modern day uh, sort of druid pagan site. So what the druids and the pagans will do is they'll sort of agree that a tree or a site near a pagan site like this has some kind of spiritual significance. And they will leave offerings of shells from the ocean and particularly colored cloth. And the belief here, especially around something called Clouty Wells, C-L-O-O-T-I-E, is that you dip this colored fabric in the water and you wrap it around a part of your body that is sick, and then you hang it on the tree, and when it finally uh, decays over time, then the sick part of your body will be healed. And then it sort of evolved from that folk practice in, in the Middle Ages to nowadays, it's sort of just a offering. You write prayers on it. You write uh, requests from your ancestors, from the earth, or whatever uh, your particular belief as a pagan or a druid is. And this is right near the, uh, the passage tomb that's overlooking France, just right over there. And again, this has kind of been, uh, it's eroding a little bit, and the Jersey Society is kind of on it trying to keep it up. But it's unusual because it's double chambered. There's a chamber right here on the floor right now. And there's another chamber back here, which indicates that there probably were two important people. And this was a place of ancestor worship, and the fact that burials took here was only incidental. It was more of a place of general, uh, like, like pagan worship. And... It's unknown what was in here, because these were grave robbed at earlier dates. It's interesting. Something has chipped off this rock a bit, or that could just be... Actually, that looks like it might just be a type of uh, granite schist, maybe. But you can imagine. This goes back to uh, one of the last dolmens I visited. That rock right here. Could have been the rock that you climbed over to transition yourself into the sort of realm of the ancestors if you were a sort of ancient uh, druidic or neolithic kind of pagan priest or priestess. By hopping over that, you enter into the realm of the earth and the ancestors. And it's actually really beautiful under here. Kind of a rainy day. Very chill. Well, the, the Mont Ub Dolmen is right up there. And it was discovered in 1848 by quarrymen looking for rocks. And you can see as the road was built through here, these would have been really the perfect sized rocks to use for the construction of, you know, buildings and churches around town. And unfortunately, these quarrymen in 1848 really did a good job at destroying this tomb. It's about 3000 BC, I believe. About as old as a lot of the other ones, but that's just a very rough estimate because basically everything here they say is about 6,000 years old and uh, very unusual and sad that these guys took away basically all of the capstones. This used to be a four chambered tomb and now it's kind of a uh, they took a lot of the stones away for building 
and rearranged them kind of as you did in Victorian times. From the signpost, it says it's more about 4000 BC, so about 6000 years old. And there were four different chambers in here when they discovered it that had already been looted somewhat. And when they did some archaeology work, they discovered that there were burnt and unburnt human remains in places like this in these chamber areas, which you can imagine like fed into the Victorian legend of the Druids as this horrifying uh, human sacrificing culture when really nobody really knows what their practices were. It could have just been they were doing that out of respect or whatnot. But again, it's very likely that in ancient times there was a wood going across the top of this and they would pile dirt on top of it. But this is Montube. Montube, I'm not sure. I'll speak French. And again, this is very close to the ocean. You can see it from right here. And I'm sure the ocean probably had a very sacred central spot in the religion of these people. This is another set of dolmens discovered basically right in the middle of the city. You can see the main road right there and a large church over here. It was discovered in 1869, again by quarrymen looking for stone. Uh, and originally it was covered, you can see, in sand. It was sand dunes because the ocean is directly down that way. And uh, it's called a village, but really it looks like they had another burial chamber in the center. And uh, over here it kind of looks like uh, the West Kennet Long Barrow. And there's many, many Long Barrows in England. So it seems like all these cultures were connected at some point because these structures just look way too similar. These Long Barrows are in France and Ireland and England, Scotland. Uh, I think there's even a lot in Portugal and in Spain, and uh, it's, it's as if the Celtic nations at one point were all one single unified thing, way back before anybody started keeping records, long before the Romans ever invaded uh, the British Isles.